Welcome to WHI Reports, a community service of News Center 7. I'm Jim Otte. Thanks for joining us this morning. On the program today, we're taking a look ahead to one of the issues we'll be voting on in the primary election coming up May 4th. It's state issue number one, the Third Frontier Program. Third Frontier provides a lot of funding for research and job creation through local universities here. In this half hour, we'll hear from the experts, both from Wright State University and the University of Dayton. First, though, we're going to give you a look at a brief overview of the Third Frontier program. The Third Frontier program pays for research at universities here and all across the state, and it's research that has a definite payoff. Here at Wright State, for example, they're looking into the future of the Internet, how it'll fit into our daily lives, even applications like Twitter and Facebook. What I basically look at is, you know, what are people saying online? How are they saying it? What are the word usages? And why are they online? Are they expressing opinion? Are they asking for information? And as soon as you understand all that, you give applications a chance to respond to it effectively. And that's just one area of research here. Renewal of the Third Frontier program would provide another $700 million for research at schools around Ohio. Those schools partner with commercial interests to conduct research and take what they come up with to the market. Think of the university as an engine that can drive our local economy. You'll see where the Third Frontier program fits in. We're on the cusp, I think, of really taking off in Ohio and generating a lot of prosperity from this relationship to the third frontier. So I think it's, it's vital that we not stop in the middle of something which is moving in the right direction. And at Tech Town, the University of Dayton Research Institute is working with new imaging technology. It's for multiple uses in mapping, city planning, even response to natural David disasters. We take university research and we've brought university research in from Notre Dame and commercialized it here in Ohio. We brought it in from UD, from Ohio State. But we also have gone all the way over to Israel and found two technologies we brought back here for commercializing. And there are some Air Force technologies that have been involved as well. Also here, they're working with sensors on unmanned aerial vehicles. Small, remote-controlled aircraft that can carry cameras to produce video in real time sent to the ground. Other sensors can detect everything from forest fires to toxic chemicals in the air. UD's Mickey McCabe says total investment through the Third Frontier program in Dayton is $123 million, with 1,300 direct jobs created or retained through that investment. The way the Third Frontier program has been constructed, a university or a research organization can't get funding unless they demonstrate to the state that they have collaborative relationships with industry and business who in turn will take that technology and commercialize it, create new companies, create new jobs, create new products. So the Third Frontier program is focused on not ivory tower research, but how do you take knowledge that we have and apply that to create new products and new jobs for Ohio. And the future of the Third Frontier program now depends on Ohio voters. And now let's meet our guest of the program this morning from the University of Dayton, John Leland. He's the director of the university's research institute. And Mickey McCabe, the UD's Vice President for Research, also from Wright State University, Dr. S. Narayan. He is the Executive Director of the Wright State Research Institute. Thanks to everybody for being here this morning. I know you're all busy and involved with the research here in the Miami Valley. It seems like the goal of this program is not that pure research, but to create jobs, to create, to get something out of this long term. Let's start with a little bit of background on each one of you. Mickey, we'll start with you. How do you get involved with this in the Research Institute here locally? Uh, I've been at uh, the Research Institute since 1993, Jim. Before that, I was with GE Aviation. Back then, it was called GE Aircraft Engines. Uh, and so I've been in the aerospace industry almost my, all, all, my, my entire career before I got into uh, academia at the Research Institute. Yeah, John? I uh, actually uh, came here from Washington. I, sp I spent a year in, in our Congress. And prior to that, I worked uh, in the Air Force Research Laboratory at wright Pat. And I started at UD in the area of technology transfer, and that was when the Third Frontier program was starting. Yeah, good timing. Yes. Absolutely. Dr. Ress. Yes, um, I, after finishing my PhD from Georgia Tech in Atlanta, I moved to Dayton and Wright State. Started there as an assistant professor, um, and then I was the founding uh, executive director of the Wright State Research Institute. So who knows the history of how Third Frontier, people, people may not have heard of this program, even though it's all around us at all of these research institutes around Ohio. Who knows the history of the Third Frontier? Where did this get started in Ohio? Well, it, <clears throat> it started out 
uh, called the Ohio Plan through the Ohio Board of Regents. And as the program developed, the state took a lot of feed uh, back from uh, constituencies all across the state of Ohio. They also looked at similar programs being conducted in Pennsylvania, Texas, Kansas, and they took the best of those programs, the lessons learned from those, the, the feedback from uh, Ohioans, and they created uh, what ultimately became uh, the Third Frontier Program led out of the Ohio De Department of Development. So the money is, is it begins uh, at the State House in Columbus, and they decide those grants that come from the research that's got to be on a competitive basis. I imagine it is incredibly competitive when you have so much money at stake there for each institution. How tough is it to get this money? Oh, absolutely. It is uh, very competitive. And there are multiple programs, and some which are focused on uh, research commercialization, some which are focused on uh, capital support for uh, infrastructure, some which are focused on uh, bringing in new talent in terms of uh, experts from uh, around the country or around the world to the Dayton area um, uh, through the Ohio Research Scholar Program, uh, for example. And um, many of these proposals get reviewed by the National Academy, which is a very prestigious uh, organization. And, um, and then it's also not only looked at from the viewpoint of whether it's solid science, but also is there a clear link to commercialization? Is there a clear link to the business side of things where it leads to job creation, for example? And so it's very competitive because you've got to balance both sides of things, which is not only is it good research, but also is there a good commercialization plan? How do you tell if there is a link, a potential, you can, just looking at it on, on its face, can you tell this has more potential than this one? This one might bring us jobs, might help a corporation here locally create or expand, create some new jobs. How do you tell? So it's a difficult, uh, it's a difficult analysis, Jim. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, what helps us more than anything is to get industry involved in the very early stages and float the ideas that we have for, for the development project and see how they react to it. Uh, if they react very positively by saying, you know what, I believe if you, if you fully develop this, I can make a new product or I can, I can create a, a new um, uh, business out of this, then you say, you know what, that's got potential. On the other hand, if they sit there and go, huh. Oh, and fall asleep, then, then maybe you don't have something. So a lot of it involves not just our, our perception of the market, but somebody else's who is in the market and what their perception of the project is. So let's talk about some specifics. We'll start at UD, at the University of Dayton Research Institute. Just pick any one program, either the, the ones we've seen in the video or another one, where it's going to show a lot of promise and going to result in a company is going to take that research take it to the market, and long-term create some jobs? Well, we, we had uh, a program funded through the state uh, in the area of uh, high-performance coatings for, for materials. And uh, to build on what Mickey said, we, we went to the state with a proposal that included team members from industry who had to put up their own money in order to get the state's money. And the state often requires a one-to-one or two-to-one or even greater match. So it's not just the companies have to put up to get something as well. And, and so that, I think, speaks very strongly to the, to the potential that the technology development holds for those companies' future, the will, willingness of them to invest. But anyways, we teamed with a number of small companies and large companies, including uh, GE, Aircraft, uh, GE Aviation now, uh, Honda, and a number of small companies uh, to look at how do we put high performance coatings into, into application. And ultimately, we developed some technology that is resident in a, in a startup company in Kettering called Nanospurs. But that technology then moves to a company that actually puts it on the part, and then another company that, that actually finishes that part, and then on to GE that actually puts the part into an engine. And uh, those industry partners said that through this program, not only did we create a new technology and jobs, but we shortened the development cycle by uh, two-thirds. We're going to take a break right here. When we come back, we're going to continue this discussion about the Third Frontier Program. We'll see it on the ballot May 4th. You're watching WHI Reports here on News Center 7. Our discussion continues in just a moment. <laughs> 